Hey student, I'm Teacher Pricks and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. It's Monday, a new day and I am happy to be here. If you are here watching the lesson, if you're watching live, thank you so much. If you are joining on Instagram, if you prefer, you can come here on YouTube because then you can see these slides that I have prepared for tonight's lesson. So I hope you enjoy. And this week, there will be live lessons from Monday to Friday. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy. I prepared a lot of content for you guys, okay? So it's going to be a very, very productive week. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And let's dive into the content. How to develop a growth mindset to achieve fluency in 2021. Well, I say 2021, but quite honestly, start today, okay? I think that if you are trying to get results in the future, your present is what you've got, okay? So don't wait for 2021 to happen. Start today, start making the necessary changes today because this is not an overnight process, okay? It's something that you build. It's something that you have to consistently follow and do and apply every day. And that's why I picked this subject. That's why I'm starting this week with the mindset, okay? Tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm going to be talking a lot about mindset, about English and skills and techniques. I'm going to be showing you a lot of interesting stuff, okay? So make sure to check it out. Now, I am a little nasal today because I had an allergic reaction. So... <laughs> I'm sorry that my voice is a little uh, here, <laughs> but hey, you do what you gotta do. Anyway, my friends, what is, oh, and here, I'm going to talk about growth mindset, okay? But to understand growth mindset, I need to start with its opposite, which is the fixed mindset. And when I talk about mindset. I'm talking about mentality. I'm talking about the way you see things, not with your eyes, with your mind. I'm talking about the way you react to things. I'm talking about the way you interpret the world. So here, let's start with the fixed mindset. What do people with a fixed mindset do or believe or are like, okay? People with this kind of mentality, the fixed mindset, always worry when they have a setback, okay? When something they didn't want happens, okay? When something not something that is not nice happens, okay? Maybe I'm doing something for my personal life or for my personal project and something bad happens, you know, it's part of the game. So these people constantly worry about that. And when something happens something negative happens, they immediately think, oh my God, am I not good at this? Is this me? Am I the problem? That's fixed mindset, okay? Another thing that happens with people with this mentality, which is the opposite of the growth mentality, they don't want challenges. They're comfortable where they are, okay? Challenges, no, 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 this is going to make me feel uncomfortable. And you know, in the past, I was really, really unfixed mindset kind of person. And with the studying, with the neuroscience, neurolinguistic programming, traveling abroad, I started to change the way I saw things. I started to change the way I interacted with the world. This kind of people ignore feedback. I remember that when I was a teenager, when teachers would give me feedback, I felt horrible. I felt like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good enough. I used to think about this a lot. Another thing about fixed mindset. People like this believe talents, skills, abilities, and, in and intelligence as a whole are fixed traits. Or you are born with this kind of thing. Or no matter what you do, you are not going to change. You can study, you can have the best professors and teachers in the world, 
but you're not going to change because you were born with this ability or you were born with this characteristic and you can't change it. No matter what you do, you can't change. And I remember watching a TV show that talked about, uh, uh, what's the name of the TV show? Dr. House. Do you know Dr. House? Have you ever watched Dr. House? He always believed people never change. People do not change. That is a clear sign of someone with a fixed mindset. And if you analyze doctors, uh, Dr. House's character, he was a person with a very fixed mindset. He was a brilliant man, but he had several kinds of limitations, okay? Brilliant, brilliant uh, character, okay? But with a very fixed mindset. Another problem with this kind of, uh, 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 of mentality, these people avoid new experiences because they are afraid of failure. Actually, every time fixed mindset people come across a challenge or a new experience, they are consumed by fear because they are afraid of failing. And then we get back to the first point. Am I not good at this? Another important thing. What are people going to think about me? What are their, uh, is their opinion going to change if I fail? So, and uh, above all, these people focus on the results. They don't focus on the process. So these are some characteristics. There are more, okay? I could be, uh, I could, I could spend my entire night talking to you guys about, uh, fixed mindset, but I don't think my runny nose, hey, exp um, expression of vocabulary of the night, my nose <laughs> is running. <laughs> but not that way. So when you have your, your runny nose, you know, you can say, I have a runny nose or my nose is running. <laughs> so I unfortunately can't spend all night telling you about a fixed mindset because I'm a growth mindset kind girl. <laughs> anyway, my friends, why am I showing you this first kind of mentality? Because I truly believe, and I will talk more about this uh, throughout the lesson, that you need to make many, not many, but specific kinds of changes if you want to achieve results in your life. And here, I'm taking my lessons to a whole new level because I'm not just talking about English anymore, okay? So I am the kind of teacher that you, you're going to find and I'm always going to be talking about personal development, neuroscience, neurolinguistic programming, and language because I believe that everything is connected. And if you are stuck, if you are not making progress, we need to take a closer look at how you think, at your mentality, at your beliefs, at your, at your emotions, because they could be impacting your results. Now, how does this kind of mentality impact your journey? How can it impact your journey? First of all, it slows, it, it slows you down, okay? And why does having this kind of mentality slow you down? Your focus changes. Without focus, it's very difficult to achieve results. You know, in my online program, the Real English Academy, one of the first things the, the students, well, should do is watch the NLP lecture they, that I make available for them and do the anchoring, the focus anchoring technique. Hey, baby sardines that are watching this lesson or watching the replay, have you done the focus anchoring technique? Let me know. If you are watching and you are my baby sardine, you have a focus anchoring. Anchoring is an NLP technique, a neuro-linguistic programming technique that I, uh, I'm a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming, and I like to apply techniques on my students, on my babies, on my baby sardines. And why the focus anchoring is so important? Why focus is so important? Because where your focus goes, energy flows. So if you are focusing on the wrong aspects of your journey, you will slow down. You will not make progress because you are not going to be focusing on the process because fluency is communication and every day you are making 
progress. But if you constantly focus on the result, you will ignore the important steps you need to follow to achieve results, to achieve fluency. Another problem of having a fixed mindset is the fear. The fear of not being able to express yourself. The fear of getting stuck. Something that may not have even happened yet and you are already afraid. Okay, I've had so many clients that were afraid of a possible job interview they, they had never had. And I'm like, well, you're afraid of a job interview you haven't even taken yet, you haven't even had yet. Why are you so afraid? Where is this fear coming from? And it's the mentality, it's the mindset. And another thing that happens, and this happened to me, and if I am not careful, I need to constantly watch myself. Because every now and then, I catch myself having the victim mentality. And here, this is a problem on your journey. Because by having the victim mentality, you could be having thoughts. You could be thinking of things like, I can't learn. I can't change. There's something wrong with me. When in reality, the wrong thing with you is something that you can change, which is here. And when you change the mind you change the game, you change the journey, because you will start to see things differently. Your reaction to things change, okay? Let me know if you agree with this. Let me know here in the comments. Uh, Next, in 2021 or in 2021, changing materials, lessons, teachers, methods, routine, if you change all of this, but you don't, if you don't change your mindset, it doesn't matter. You are not going to get the results you want. And I'm sorry to break it to you. You could go to Harvard to study English. Or you could have the best English teacher in the galaxy. It's not going to do you any good. Because this is not an overnight process. One thing that I always talk to my students about is we need to work here the mind and the language of course we have to study we need to study grammar we need to study vocabulary we need to have a review process we need to practice all of these aspects and this week I'm going to be giving you some practical tips as well but if you don't work on your mindset if you don't work on cultivating more positive thoughts about your learning process, about your English journey to fluency, it doesn't matter. And as a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming, I have seen so many cases and so many stories of consistent changes after students and clients that were only NLP clients began to understand that it's a mental process. That it's not just learning exercises, doing lessons, uh, but changing the mindset, okay? And this is something that happens little by little. I'm not going to lie to you and say, wow, you follow this tip, you wake up and start uh, speaking mantras to yourself. I'm a positive person. The world is amazing. No, no, no. Don't be a happy Pollyanna. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about understanding your emotions and changing the language. I'm going to be giving you some ideas of little things that you can change that will help you. Okay? And I'm getting some comments here. Teacher, I totally agree. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely agree. That is awesome. Someone said, perfect teacher. We need to change our mindset. I am happy you are on the same page. Because if you don't change that, my friend, it's going to be tough, you know? And I've been working for more than 15 years. And I observed many, many different cases. I have seen clients go to the United States, study at excellent schools, really amazing five stars call uh, uh schools and yet they couldn't have good results because of this and not just in english i have had clients who shared uh personal life challenges and problems and because of their mindset 
they couldn't improve. They couldn't get off that zone, of that stuck zone. So in 2021, you will be getting lots of tools from me to help you with your English aspect, okay? But here, I'm trying to show you that you as a person, your mentality needs to change. In the academy, I'm always telling my baby sardines, change here, focus. They also have the bridge to the future. Change your future version by visualizing who you want to become. Because when you change that version, when you start to imagine a better version of yourself, things start to change. They don't become perfect overnight. That's not my promise. But you begin to change. And I've been seeing this day after day, year after year. And I know that in 30 years, I will be here if YouTube still exists. And I'll still be talking maybe with more advanced NLP techniques. <laughs> but I'll still be telling you about the importance of changing mindset. You know, when I was 20, 20, 20, 22, 23, life was so hard to me. And I, I'm not going to complain here. I'm not going to say I was sick. No, I was not sick. I was very healthy when I was 20. I had some health problems, but it was okay. I had a job. I didn't make a lot of money, but I had a job. But my mindset was so, so low energy. My vibration was so, so low that I couldn't see change. I compared myself to everyone and everything. And I always had this fixed mindset. I saw successful people around me and I felt, well, I can't be like that person because I was born this way. You know, Lady Gaga's song, Born This Way. I think it's, that's the name of the song. I was born this way. No, you were not born this way. You can change any way you want. Of course, I'm not talking about impossible things. I'm going to fly. No, you're not going to fly. If you have blue eyes, I'm sorry. You're not going to have black eyes if you have blue eyes. I'm not talking about <laughs> impossible or scientifically impossible things. Like, okay, I want to have another arm and be like Shiva, you know, like lots of arms. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But you were not born this way. Actually, you were born perfectly. But the environment you grew up in it started to shape you and started to create beliefs, belief systems that as an adult, you hold on to them. But these are things that can be changed, okay? So in 2021, more than the language lessons and the materials you use, we have to change right here. That being said, what is a growth mindset? And I am working on myself. I was talking to a student about this this afternoon. And I said, I don't have a 100% growth mindset. Actually, by reading some uh, uh, research uh, materials and lessons, watching some documentaries, I'm not saying it's 100% impossible. You know, it's not impossible, but it's very challenging to be 100% growth mindset okay um i'm not saying it's 100 percent impossible because i believe people change so it would be uh it would go against what i believe but being 100 percent growth mentality is challenging okay not everyone can do that but everyone can get better at it okay growth mentality the growth mindset people with this mindset they don't wait for the result. And here is an important thing. They praise themselves. What is to praise? Oh, good job. You are amazing. Oh, good job. You are an excellent teacher. That's praising, okay? I'm telling people or myself good things. Oh, congratulations. Wow, you are very successful. People with a growth mindset, they don't wait only when they have the result to praise themselves they praise the process wow i'm working hard you know last week i didn't study during the week i was very busy and i i had a, a an online course that i was participating in so i didn't have time to study italian and then on friday i was feeling a little guilty 
So what did I think? Okay, I'm going to honor myself and tomorrow morning I'm going to study. And I did that on Saturday and I did that on Sunday. And I was like, wow, I was not praising myself. I was praising the process. I reminded myself that studying consistently was important. And I woke up early and I studied on Saturday and I studied on Sunday because I didn't have time to study during the week. So I praised my process. I praised the consistency. And this has a huge impact on your brain. If you Google uh, the... The name, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but her first name is Carol. Let's see, mindset, because her last name is a little, little difficult. Let's see, where is she? Where is she? Carol, Carol, Carol Dweck. I think that's her, yes, Dweck. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name cor correctly. Carol, Carol Dweck. I think that's how you spell it. Let's see, D, 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 W, D, W. Yes, D-W-E-C-K. Yes, Dweck. And she talks about the studies and research that she did to get to this, okay? And people with a growth mindset really praise the process, the process of getting things done, not necessarily the result. And if you watch my channel, if you follow my lessons, you know that I'm always talking about English as a journey, ups and downs, good days, bad days, neutral days, periods of time when you feel no change because it's a journey. Another important thing about people with a growth mindset, they believe their basic uh boop, boop, boop. they believe their basic qualities are things they can change and improve. Uh, ah, okay, so here I had a a typing mistake on this slide. I separated. They believe their basic qualities are things they can cultivate through their efforts. Okay, so I made a few typing mistakes here. And here's not, it's not your, it's their because I used they. I was using you, 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 but then I changed it to they. I thought it was better. But here it is. So they believe their basic qualities are things they can cultivate through their efforts. What is that supposed to mean? Everyone is born with qualities. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you do in your life, how simple or how awesome it is. Everybody is born with qualities. Everybody cultivates qualities and skills and abilities. And throughout your life, you can cultivate these skills. But you need effort. You need to do, to do the job, you know, to get up in the morning and do the work so they believe they can get better. It is possible to improve and cultivate the, uh, the abilities and the skills they have. This is a no-brainer. You know, there's no confusion here. I was born with skills and I can master them. I can improve. I can get better. There is always room for improvement. Another important thing, they embrace challenges challenge accepted they accept challenges they enjoy challenges in the past i hated challenges when i was young i hated change i absolutely hated change i would feel sick just thinking of changing things changing the way i did things and as I started to learn more about the human brain and personal development, and as I started having great people around me, I began to understand that change is awesome. Change is what allows me to become a better person. And this is the kind of mentality that will help you in your life, whether it is to become a fluent English speaker or to become a, an awesome doctor or a great engineer or a very competent lawyer. Embrace challenges. Persist in the face of difficulties. There will be days when you will think that English is not something for you. Oh my God, English is not for me, teacher. These are the difficult days. Persist. Because they are going to happen. A journey is not, um, let's see, it's not like cartoons oh it's gonna be perfect every day it's gonna be amazing all the time that is not what it's like it, it this is a, a romantic way 
of dealing with the challenges in life. So you need to persist in the faces of difficulties. They see effort as the path to mastery. In the past, I used to think that I had to, to make a lot of effort, but at the end, things were not working out. You know, I was talking to this student again, and I said, uh, in the past, I believed, okay, you're lucky. There is a magical field, a force that makes some people get things and other people like me not get things. Guys, that was very annoying. <laughs> I used to see effort as the path to misery, not mastery. And today I know, and I work hard, and I work on Saturdays, and I work on Sundays, and I work late at night because I know that effort will lead me to mastery. So last weekend when I decided to study, even though I was tired, I decided to study. I knew that effort leads me to mastery. And the process is not always fun, but I applaud my persistence. These are characteristics of people with a growth mindset. And as I said, I have my moments when I have a fixed mindset. And I will share a quiz with you guys, a link to a quiz where you can find out what your level is. Okay, so that's a, a very important thing. Oh, it's very interesting. More pain, excuse me, more gain, more pleasure. Yes, you know, and uh, there is the saying at the gym, no pain, no gain. Guys, no effort, no gain. It's not about pain. It's about no effort, no effort, no gain. It's not about no pain, no gain. It's not that you have to suffer. It's that you have to make the effort. You have to work. You have to do your best. And then you will have success. You will have the gain. But this is not a bad thing. In the past, I used to think that, oh, I have to work so hard to get everything. Other people get things so easily. And when I studied neurolinguistic programming, I understood why um, I said certain things because we learn since we are kids, we are educated in schools to create this kind of victim mentality. And I, I followed the game, uh, you know, I went to school, even pro uh, public, private schools. I'm not talking about, oh, because I went to public schools. No, 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 no. It's the system in the world. They teach you that kind of mentality. And then I started to understand why we generalize. You know, when we are talking, oh, those people, everybody, we're trying to protect ourselves, okay? When we bring the, the pronoun to I, it's difficult because then you have to take a look at yourself. So when we are talking, we tend to use they, the people, everybody to protect ourselves. So this, uh, this is a subject for another lesson. <laughs> Now... 2021, guys, push out of your comfort zone. And in the book of the, the Mindset by, by Carol Dweck, she talks about a study that she, she carried um, with, I think, children, young learners. And here, she, she, based on all her research and studies, she concluded that when you work hard to learn something and you stick, you follow the process, Magic. I'm using the word magic, but it's science, okay, guys? <laughs> it's nothing, nothing supernatural or magical. No, it's science, okay? But I use the word magic because I like the word magic. <laughs> because for me, it's magic, you know? Magic, science to me is magic. I think science is so powerful that... Uh, Uh, I, I like to say it's magic because when you start to understand science, you see that it's amazing, you know? Magic happens in your brain. What happens when you work really hard, when you persist, when you stick to the process? The neurons in your brain can form new, stronger connections. And over time, as you are forming new connections and new connections and new connections in your brain, you get more intelligent. Yay! 
It is true. There is science behind it, okay? I, I will try to find some articles talking about this and share with you. But that's basically what happens. But to make that happen, you need to get out of your comfort zone. Because if you just do things that make you feel comfortable, you will stay in your comfort zone and you will not excel. You will not improve because you're not challenging your brain. And as adults, we need to have that constant challenge because we have already learned a lot of things. So throughout the day, our brain is constantly on automatic mode, on autopilot. So it's important to challenge and study and work hard and follow the process because as this is happening, you are working on your brain. Your brain is creating stronger connections. And as a result, you become smarter. You become more intelligent. So it's not no pain, no gain. It's no effort, no gain. No effort, no intelligence. No effort, no mastery. So if I have an important message for you this week, and we're going to study a lot here on my channel, and in 2021, my baby sardines who are in my program, no effort, no results. I'm not saying that you're going to study for 10 hours a day and sacrifice your resting time, your entertainment time. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is I didn't study during the week. So I thought no effort, no mastery. So I'm going to do my best this weekend and I'm going to do it again here. I'm going to study. I'm going to get my books. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to follow my routine. And that's what I did growth mindset it was not pain it was not painful to me oh my god it's saturday morning and here i am googling these words and studying no 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 effort because i know i have a plan i have a goal it is important to me i want to become a better italian speaker and when i sit down to study phonetics and english grammar and advanced reading skills i know no effort no mastery Okay, so hashtag no effort, no mastery. <laughs> now, another important thing, and here my, uh, my recommendation is change your language. And as I, let me drink some water, I'm thirsty. And as a master practitioner, of, a master of practitioner, <laughs> as a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I started taking NLP, it was shocking to me, you know, uh, the guy, I, I took the course with a Brazilian guy, he represents NLP in Brazil, there are many schools that represent NLP, you know, in Brazil, and in, around the world, okay, you will find lots of schools, you just need to make sure that these are certified schools, okay, in my case, I have an international certification of master new, uh, NLP, uh, you know, so it's an international certification. Now, the first things I learned when I was taking the basic course of NLP was the language. The language is like a, a computer software and it's going to program your mind. Okay, so it's not about uh, alternative uh, positiveness, no. If you constantly say things, if you're constantly giving comments to your brain, it's going to accept it. That's why uh, uh, we have to be very careful with the things we read, with the things we watch, with the things we tell ourselves, because the language is a way to program your mind. So here, what I invite you to do is have an open mind, okay? Neuro-linguistic programming is about having an open mind, opening your mind to different possibilities. So what I invite you to do is change your language. So instead of saying to yourself, I'm not good at it, I can't do it, I don't have the ability to learn, it's better to stick to what I know and let go of the new thing because it's not working out for me. Ah, my potential, no, 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 my potential is this. I can't expand my potential. This is who I am. I was born this way. No, you weren't. Change the language. I'm not good at it. No, I can do better. I can do it. I want to try and not give up. I want to explore new ideas. 
I believe in myself. And if and when I uh, a few years ago, I read a book that really helped me by Louise Hay. I think the name of the book is You Can Heal Yourself. And in some moments, she, she talks about the language. If it's very difficult for you to say, I believe in myself, you can change the language. Each day, I work on believing in myself. If it's something that you, it's hard for you to say, I don't, I believe in myself, I'm lying. I'm working each day to believe more in myself, to believe that I can do it. Every day I work on changing the way I see myself, change the language. Instead of saying, I don't believe in myself, I, I don't know, there's something, there's something wrong with me. You know, I have, a, I have a story to share, but I don't have enough likes, okay? So right now on, on YouTube, <laughs> I have 64 likes. If I get 100 likes, hey, that's bold, then I'll tell you the story. A story that happened to me when I was working at a company that that is connected to this then I'll share it with you okay uh, anyway so change of 100 likes 64 right now okay so I'm telling if I don't get it, it's fine it's no problem but then I don't tell the story <laughs> <laughs> evil teacher so if you are on YouTube you can excuse me if you are on Instagram come to YouTube hit the like button and then come back to Instagram no brainer anyway it's okay to fail. My God, when I was young, I was so afraid of failing. I was so afraid and I, it was almost unconscious. I didn't even know where the fear was coming from. And here today, if you change your language, it's okay to fail. I can fail a million times. I'm young. And even if you're 60, you are young. Okay, you are young because, guys, I'm talking about personal development. It's never late to try again, to be successful in your own way. So it's okay to fail. I can get up the other day and try again. I can learn from my mistakes. When I took my uh, NLP, I loved this lesson and he, uh, his name is San Jolin. Okay. He has a YouTube channel. He's Brazilian. So if you want to learn more about NLP, Sam, S-A-M, Sam, Sam, Sam Jolin, J-O-L-E-M-E-N. I don't know, Sam Jolin. And he said, I can learn from my mistakes. Everything is feedback. And what is feedback? Feedback is information that can help you get better. So he said, no, 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 this is not criticism. It's feedback because everything is feedback. Okay. So let's see if the likes hit. People don't want to know. 20 more likes. 20 more likes. And I'll tell you, we have 121 people watching. So if we get 20 more likes, I'll tell you the story that happened to me at a company where I worked. And it was a good lesson to me. Because at that moment, oh, I can't tell you anymore. I can't, I can't, I can't tell. Because we're not at 100 yet. <laughs> I just don't know yet. Oh, and there is something that I, I was reading. Uh, because I read, I don't have the book here. My house is, a, my apartment is a mess because I'm moving. Start spreading the news. I'm not moving to New York, I wish. I'm just moving. <laughs> <laughs> to a different apartment and uh carol um carol dweck i think that's her last name carol dweck talked about the use of the word yet so every time you are telling yourself thinking to yourself wow i don't speak english well yet always finish your sentence with yet yet but i will this is already a very important change. And she told about a school. I don't know if it's in Chicago. Okay. I don't remember where the school was, but she said that, uh, in some schools, uh, elementary schools for children, uh, the grade, the grade, for example, I do a test. Okay. I do a test. This is my test. Then the teacher can put, ah, oh, A, 10, 9, uh, or good, very good. And then for some students that didn't do well, she, 
she she the the teachers would write like this oh not excellent yet not 10 yet not uh uh very good yet why do i finish with the word yet because this means that it's not that i am not very good i'm not very good yet i can work and i can improve so this is a very powerful change and we may think that oh but it's just a word guys that's how we program the mind that's how we tell our brain to do things think about the songs you listen to if you are sad and you start listening to a very sad song how do you feel do you feel better or do you, do you feel worse i hate listening to songs that have very bad lyrics because i know that I'm listening to words and these words can program my mind. I'm not talking about songs that have a deeper meaning that are going to make me feel emotional. Not talking about that. I'm talking about songs that will bring me down. Simple like that. That will only make me feel sad. Like really, really bad. Language. Words. Okay, so be careful with the words you use and changing to yet. Wow, my listening is not improving yet. Wow, my vocabulary is not better yet. This change is important. It's going to start helping you switch from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. The kind of mindset that I encourage you guys to develop. And there are many strategies of things you can do to develop a better and uh, a growth mindset, okay? It's very, very important. So changing the language, okay? Now, what do you need to change in 2021? Your English study habits. I'm not going to be like, okay, you know, no effort, no 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 mastery congratulations now you can go have a wonderful day no come on i'm not gonna be a hypocrite you need to change the habits you need to change your practice there are things that you need to do um, in order to achieve results you need to be a consistent student you need to organize your skills and practice all the english skills and i'm gonna be giving you more recommendations about that this week so of course you need to change your study habits okay just thinking positively yay but no actions i'm sorry that's not how growth mentality works okay growth mentality means you do you make the effort you do the necessary work so one thing here is you need to change your english study habits okay habits will dictate whether you are successful or not okay 10 more likes and i'll tell you this story 10 more likes 10 more likes 10 10 10 more likes <laughs> your mindset okay uh, here very important thing change the start in the mark in the mars in mars let's all become martians go to mars and become aliens <laughs> no seriously now mindset okay and rewatch this lesson take notes tonight's lesson we will stay here on the channel the lessons from tomorrow wednesday thursday and friday they will be removed but this lesson no this lesson will be here forever and never for you guys okay so mindset watch this lesson study i have more lessons about mindset here on my channel if you want recommendations of good books and articles to read send us an email okay either me or my assistants will reply of good books you can read about mindset this was a very important a part of my process of becoming a better person okay emotions oh 100 we 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 will rock you you guys are amazing you guys are awesome okay i will stop right now and i'll tell you the story okay uh when i was I, I think about 23 and at that moment i was going through a difficult time in my life okay i had come back from the united states and uh when i came back from the us i decided to come to sao paulo okay sao paulo is a big city in the in, in brazil 
So I came to Sao Paulo. I didn't go back to my parents' house. I came to Sao Paulo. And I still had a very fixed mindset. I compared myself to others. I thought everybody was more successful than me. Even though I had gone to Harvard, I had studied at Harvard, I had lived in the US for two years. I had taken many different courses there. I felt like something was wrong with me. I had a problem with me that everybody was, everybody was getting better but myself. And I started working at this company. Um, it was a medium-sized company. And there I was supposed to work as a project assistant. Okay. But because it was a very small company, I was basically um, uh, the girl Friday, you know. Uh, the girl, the boy Friday or the girl Friday is the kind of person that does everything. You need coffee? I'm here. You need, uh, you need me to get your mail? I'll do it. You need me to scratch your back? I'll do it. And that made me very disappointed because I didn't know. I didn't know that was the job. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that that's what I'm doing here. And I felt horrible. And uh, every day was hard to go to that office and do my job and I was constantly looking around and thinking oh that person is so successful that person is so lucky and <laughs> I was not a very nice person <laughs> at that time uh, there was this secretary and she made my life a living hell she didn't like me she didn't like me at all so she she sometimes she asked me Priscilla can you go to the other department and get me a pen guys I'm not joking she would ask me to go to another department to get a pen a freaking pen and I would say why do you want me to go all the way there to get you a pen and then she said Priscilla this is private business you do what I'm telling you to do and I would get up and I would go get the freaking pen. You know, I'm telling you, this happened. Sometimes she would, uh, uh, her boss, we had different bosses, different managers. Her boss would ask her to get coffee. She would look at me and say, Priscilla, go get coffee. And then I would say, but your boss asked you, girl, you should do it. And then she would say, I am working on confidential business. So you go get the coffee because what I'm doing is more important. And guys, that got me so angry. So angry. It is so hard. I was not born to be a secretary because, guys, God bless secretaries. But there are some secretaries that are awful. And I had, as it was a family's company, it was a family's company, meaning the president and the vice president were married. The... Um, uh, human resources director was the president's daughter. The financial director was the daughter's husband. So it was a family's company. It was awful. Okay. And after some time, I had to work for the vice president, the wife. And she was hard. You know, she was, she was <laughs> no easy task. And one day, she gets me in her room. She, she asks me, Priscilla, come here. She looks at me and she says, Priscilla, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, crap. Do I say now? I'm not okay. I don't like this job. Nobody believes me. Nobody gives me... I don't know. I don't like it here. But I, I needed the money. So I said, no, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm good. She looks at me and says, Priscilla, there is something, I'm, I, this, she, she did this, okay, not with all the exaggeration, but she did this, okay, there's something wrong with you, and I don't know what, I don't know what it is, but something with you is not good, on that day, I opened my eye, I said, what, you are saying there is something that you can't even describe that is wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with me. Of course, I didn't tell her that. You know, I didn't, okay? I didn't. But she looked at me and she said, there's something bad in you. Something bad in me? What kind of boss tells you that? There's something bad about you. And I don't know what it is. 
you don't do anything right. You don't write emails well. You don't, uh, you don't bring the coffee the way I like. You make Portuguese mistakes. Everything is wrong with you. On that day, I, I respect it because she was older and she was my boss. I heard everything I said. And on that day, I began to realize that she was wrong to say that. But it was a wake-up call. Because maybe there was something wrong. But it's not that I was wrong. That I'm a problem. That I am bad. Maybe I was going through something at that moment. And I got out of her room. I googled a letter of resignation and I quit. I went to the human resources. I gave my letter of resignation. You know, I'm quit, bitches. Of course, I didn't say that. I went to human resources and it was her daughter. And she said, Priscilla, I know my mother is difficult. But is there a way? I was the only person in that company that spoke English. The only person that spoke English. They needed me to speak English. Rarely, but they did. And she said, is there anything we can do? And I told her, there isn't. Because in a way, she's right. Because I'm not happy doing what I'm doing. I need to find what makes me happy. Now, she's wrong because she said there is something wrong with me. Something bad in me. People are not bad. Things happen to people. You have problems, you have challenges, but don't let them define you, okay? On that day, my problem with my boss, uh, my ex-boss, was that she was defining me as a bad person. She was defining me as someone that had something bad. And I was not that person. So here, guys, everybody can have moments of growth mindset. You are not fixed and uh, forever, you know, there is a solution. I had a very fixed mindset. But on that day, it was a wake-up call that, mm -mm, I don't agree with her. I have bad moments, I have bad days. But I'm very good at other things and I can do things. I'm competent. So on that day, I quit my job. And guys, I had zero money in my pocket, okay? I, I, I paid the rent. On that in that month and I didn't have any money with me and I, I was going to college so I had to pay college and on that day I took the bus home <laughs> was far away from home I took the bus home and I thought God I don't know what to do but I need another job and I know that I can make an effort and I can work hard and I can do it I need a job and on that very same day, the phone rang and I got a job interview and I passed. And the ooh, ooh never was a, a, a thing people mentioned. Quite on the contrary, they mentioned they were, I was competent, that I was a hard worker, that I did my best, that I was always trying to bring new ideas, that I was very proactive. They recognized, but I made the effort. So maybe right now you are in your comfort zone. I was in my comfort zone. The salary was good, you know, the job was very easy, but I was not making an effort. I was not working hard to get out of the comfort zone. And when I quit that job that day, it was a little irresponsible. I didn't have any money to pay for rent the next month. I called my father and I remember I said, Dad, I quit my job. <laughs> And he said, my father always supported me. And when I said, dad, I quit my job, he was like, I trust you. If you quit your job, you quit your job. Now find another job. You can do this. And on that same day, I called my dad and said, dad, I got another job. And he was like, whoa, that was fast. <laughs> on the same day. So get out of your comfort zone and things start happening. And this happened to me several other times, okay? This happened to me in the United States. This happens to me all the time. Get out of your comfort zone if you want to be successful. And don't let anyone say what kind of person you are, okay? Only you can say what kind of person you are. Okay, don't let anyone with their beliefs, oh, there's something. Ooh. Don't let people do that to you. It's so, so negative. 
and people can influence us. Every time someone comes, someone comes to me and asks Priscilla, what do you think of me? I'm like, I think you're awesome. I think you can do great. And I continue my observation. You have to do work. You have to work on yourself. You have to improve. You have to constantly improve, but don't let anyone make you think less of yourself. Because you were not born this way. I don't agree with Lady Gaga. Born this way. No, 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 no. Everything can be changed. And I don't agree with Dr. House either. People change. I have changed a lot throughout the years. Maybe that woman, unfortunately, didn't know how to express herself. Maybe she was trying to help me. And in a way, she did. Because I realized that I was in my comfort zone. First, because I was letting her talk to me like that. Today, if it were today, this would be on the social media, you know, uh, harassment. <laughs> but at that time, not a long time ago, it was in 2011, uh, things were a little bit different. So be courageous, be brave. Don't let people dictate what kind of person you are. Look at the mirror and make the changes you have to make, okay? So moving on. What do you need to do in 2021? English study habits. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, be positive. No, you have to, to change the way you study grammar, the way you study vocabulary and so many other things. My God, I have many things to talk about yet. Mindset. Everything starts in the mind. Emotions. Emotions impact your results. If you're constantly feeling down and out, down in the dumps, oh my goodness, change. Okay. Physical posture. Depressed people, unfortunately, many depressed people have a very different physical posture. If you start to pay attention, the way their body language works. So if you are feeling a little sad, not in depression, okay? If you are feeling a little sad and you want to feel better, change the body physically. Change the way you are sitting down. I know that when I'm sitting down like this... <sighs> The things don't work out. Okay, energy. You need energy. Your language from negative to positive. Don't lie to yourself. But you don't need to be negative either. Okay, you can be honest without being negative. That's there's a very clear difference. Okay, now I will post a quiz in the comments on YouTube, I can't do that on Instagram, but on YouTube, after the video is over, I will post a quiz for you guys to take that will help you find out where you are. If you are more uh, inclined to a growth mindset or if you're more inclined to a fixed mindset, okay? My example, uh, my result was growth with a little fixed mindset because I know I have to work on myself, but that's okay because I have the rest of my life to work on myself. Okay, now, Babe Sardines questions to finish up. First question from Mara. Baby Sardines are my students in the Real English Academy, my online program. Today, before the live lesson, I made a post. I think I made a post yesterday and I said, hey, babies, any questions? And I'll answer them now. Teacher, my question is related to the imitation technique that you recommend to use with the listening file of the program, the Real English Academy. How does it work and how can we apply this technique in the best way? Thank you so much, Mara. Guys, what is the imitation technique? The imitation technique is shadowing, okay? Now, in the academy, the students have the listening part. And in the listening part, they have the listening exercises to work on comprehension, general and details, to improve their listening skills. And after the exercise, I always tell them to do the imitation technique, the shadowing. Basically, Mara, what you're going to do is you are going to play the audio again, and as the speaker is speaking, you will try to follow as much as possible with intonation and speed. If he speaks too fast, then you can reduce the speed of the audio. Okay, it is possible to do that in the platform. So if the, the speaker is speaking too fast for you to follow, you can slow down a little bit. Okay, and as the person is speaking, you follow the same intonation. Okay, so if the voice is rising, you rise. If it's more neutral, you are neutral as well. If it goes down, you go down. If you get stuck at some words, this means you have to check the pronunciation of those words, okay? And that is something that you can do. You can check an online dictionary or you can just focus on the listening, 
listen to the speaker and repeat that particular word. Okay, if it's a new word to you, you may need a little bit more time to work on the pronunciation. So you can go to an online dictionary and practice repeating that particular word that is making you get stuck in the shadowing technique, and then you can move on. Okay, so shadowing is a very good exercise, and here the idea is to help you speak words more clearly, more correctly, and more quickly depending on the conversation you're having. So basically, that's what you need to do. I don't recommend pausing. Pause, pause, pause. Unless the audio is too difficult, but I, it's not ideal. When you're practicing shadowing, you have to keep going. You have to keep going, even if you miss a few phrases, because then you can start again and do it again. You can practice a few more times, okay? I hope this helps. Let me know if you have more questions about shadowing. Next question from Rubia. Right, uh, hi, teacher. I have a grammar English question. When I'm speaking or writing down about any subject and I mention people or a person and in the same sentence, I'm going to mention them again. I can talk or write down respectively then and it. Okay, if you're talking about an object in the singular form, then you use it, okay? If you're talking about people, you can use the general pronoun they or them, okay? So this is very is a very common practice. So if I, uh, if I say people, okay, if I'm using the word people, of course that I have to use they after that. But um, if I use the word person, which is singular, I can also use they because they will be a general pronoun to describe uh, that particular person, okay? Actually, uh, this was a question that other baby sardines had inside the academy. When I am giving general answers, talking about general things, I like to use, to make my sentences in the plural. So I don't say a person, I always focus on people. People need to understand they have to work on their emotions. Always focus on plural when you are describing general ideas. And when I say plural, even objects, complements, okay? This is much better when you are speaking and describing general things. Uh, people that are not, it's not a John or Mary, but people in general. Always focus on that kind of pronoun, they, them, it, if it's singular or a singular idea, then you may use it, okay? Other than that, my friends, share this lesson if you enjoyed it. And I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow the lesson will be very, very good, okay? I gotta go because I got stuff to do. Bye, Instagram. I have to go here. Bye-bye. And people on YouTube, share the lesson and be here tomorrow, 7.30. And I'll see you next time. Bye.